Let's review megakaryocyte and platelet maturation. In terms of early development, megakaryocytes actually develop early on in the hematopoietic lineage tree. Shown here are the results of single cell RNA sequencing data. Each point represents a single cell transcriptome from a collection of CD34 positive human progenitor stem cells. You can see that the megakaryocytic and erythroid progenitors, or MEPs, actually branch off early from the multipotent progenitors and common myeloid progenitor series. So this is one of the earlier cell fate decisions made in hematopoiesis compared to common myeloid and lymphoid progenitors, which share a lot of overlap in the progenitor phases of development. MEP commitment toward megakaryocytic maturation is tightly regulated through transcriptional and epigenetic mechanisms, which act together with extrinsic signals. Thrombopoietin, or TPO, and its receptor, MIPL, play the primary role in the extrinsic signaling of megakaryopoiesis. The TPO ligand is predominantly produced in the liver with significantly smaller amounts also being produced in the kidney, testes, and bone marrow. The MIPL receptor is a homodimeric type receptor that requires the tyrosine kinase JAK2 for signaling. The tpo mipl axis is important for hematopoietic stem cell proliferation and megakaryocyte commitment, but it is actually not needed in megakaryocyte maturation or platelet production. This is an early signaling event. Several transcription factors downstream of this tpo mipl signaling drive megakaryopoiesis and platelet production. Among them, GATA1 is essential for proper erythroid and megakaryocyte differentiation. GATA1 null embryonic stem cells can produce megakaryocytic and erythroid progenitors, but their maturation is severely impaired. And germline missense mutations in GATA1 result in X-linked thrombocytopenia and anemia. In addition to GATA1, there is FLY1, which is another pro-megakaryocytic transcription factor. FLY1 and GATA1 work together to activate the expression of several megakaryocyte-specific and platelet-specific receptors like MIPL, glycoprotein 2B, also known as CD41, and glycoprotein 9, also known as CD42A. They also activate several other transcription factors responsible for megakaryocyte and platelet maturation, among them RUNX1, which affects megakaryocyte polyploidy and allows for proplatelet formation by regulating downstream target expression of MYH9, MYH10, and MYL9. TUB1 is another transcription factor downstream of GATA1, which encodes a major component of microtubules. And the transcription factor NFE2, which when knocked out in mice, results in absence of circulating platelets. Disorders that affect proplatelet formation often show mutations in these later stage genes, which mostly deal with the actin tubulin uh, cytoskeleton, such as TUB1, MYH9, and actin1. Other important transcription factors include MYB, which antagonizes megakaryopoiesis and favors an erythroid cell fate. TPO MIPL signaling can knock down MIB expression through microRNA expression and help control erythropoiesis. During maturation, as megakaryocytes grow in size, they replicate their DNA through endomitosis. This is when cells replicate their chromosomes without cytokinesis and mitosis. So instead of being divided into two new daughter nuclei, the replicated chromosomes are retained within the original nuclear membrane. And this occurs multiple times, increasing the chromosome number with each round of replication and endomitosis, resulting in a polyploid cell with the lobulated nuclei we are all familiar with. In fact, they can undergo up to 32 cycles of endomitosis, reaching 64N DNA, compared to the standard 2N most cells have. The morphologic spectrum of maturing megakaryocytes is displayed here. In panel A, or stage 1, of maturation, 
Megakaryocytic precursor cells account for about 10% of all megakaryocytes in the adult bone marrow and have a diameter of 10 to 12 micrometers. They show high nuclear cytoplasmic ratios and scant cytoplasm. And this stage is mainly identified by immunohistochemistry rather than by morphologic criteria. Panel B shows stage 2, or megakaryoblasts, derived from stage 1 cells that have undergone at least two cycles of endomitosis. The nuclei and cytoplasm develop synchronously, and during this time, more proteins and other macromolecules are synthesized. These megakaryoblasts are the early cells that can be identified on morphologic and ultrastructural characteristics. They are 14 to 20 micrometers in diameter, have an irregular deep blue and often budding cytoplasm, larger nuclei, and obvious nucleoli. Panel C and D show stage 3 cells with a diameter of 20 to 40 micrometers, with lobular nuclei or even multinucleation in rare cases, a semi-transparent marginal zone, and a central area containing tiny granules. Ploidy varies in this stage, and this is also the stage where the demarcating membrane system, or DMS, begins to expand. The DMS is a labyrinth-like membrane system that forms in the cytoplasm and appears to be an extension of the rough endoplasmic reticulum and Golgi apparatus by ultrastructural analysis. Its function is to prepare the cytoplasm for proplatelet division and release. Panel E shows a stage 4 megakaryocyte with a diameter that varies between 40 and 60 micrometers, lobulated nucleus, and prominent cytoplasm with fine granules. The granules comprise of both alpha and dense granules that will eventually make up the contents of platelets. Alpha granules hold the proteins and growth factors like von Willebrand factor, PDGF, etc., while dense granules hold smaller molecules and elements like ADP, ATP, calcium, and serotonin. Endomitosis has ceased in this stage, and the DMS becomes dispersed throughout the cytoplasm, dividing it into similarly sized compartments that form intracellular platelet precursors. And finally, panel F shows a mature megakaryocyte releasing platelets. You can see the cytoplasm here is sheared and irregular, and there is even pseudopodia. After the cytoplasm is completely released, the remnant nucleus is phagocytosed by resident macrophages in the bone marrow. After megakaryocytic differentiation, there are two proposed mechanisms for platelet release. In one scenario, protoplatelet processes break up to become preplatelets, as seen in this live cell imaging video here. Alternatively, the megakaryocyte may form pseudopodia, which are ribbons of cytoplasmic projections that protrude through the sinusoidal endothelium and are able to continuously release preplatelets into the circulation. These cytoplasmic projections are stabilized by microtubule formations. In either scenario, each of these protoplatelet processes can give rise to between 2,000 and 5,000 new platelets. Overall, two-thirds of these newly produced platelets will remain in circulation, while the remaining one-third are sequestered by the spleen. It is in the blood that these larger preplatelets become smaller platelets by fission. So classically, platelets develop in a two-step process. First, there is megakaryocyte differentiation, followed by platelet release into the circulation. Some have proposed a third step in maturation, which is the preplatelet to platelet transition that occurs in the peripheral blood.